My utmost reason is. <laughs> and my utmost means my Pepsi. <laughs> When the temp starts hitting, oh, 90s and onward and upward, then I start reaching for the Pepsi, the water, the Gatorade, the Kool-Aid, you name it. I start drinking. <laughs> Whenever we find ourselves dry, that's about the time we should drink it. Whenever you find yourself challenged, God doesn't say to press through or press on or throw your shield or quote a scripture. He says, stop. Reevaluate. Assess the situation. Seek his face. Listen to his voice and then go in the direction that he chooses for you to go. Taking those times, for me, are crucial because I write a lot. And sometimes I speak. And one word whether written or spoken, can often devastate a person, spiritually, emotionally. It can challenge them physically. It can create or cause conflict. Now, there's a lot of good that the written word does, and I am very well aware of that. I have seen the benefits of being a writer, and what I can do to inspire others, you know, to follow God and to live according to His will and inspire them with what I write about life and experience as well as what the Lord is doing every day with me. But when I'm dry, I know I have to drink up, you know, and I have to get back into the Word and I have to fill up, so to speak what's lacking in me that I've already poured out to someone else. In utmost, as we listen to what God would say, I think that's our goal is to be always pouring out so that we are always needing to fill up and to not hoard, as it were, the Word of God in us. I think we should just go forward giving to everyone that asks. The conditions of discipleship. If any man come to me and hate not, fill in the blank, he cannot be my disciple. Luke 14, 26. If the closest relationships of life clash with the claims of Jesus Christ on you, he says it must be instant obedience to himself. He says discipleship means personal, passionate devotion to a person, our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a difference between devotion to a person and devotions to a principle or a cause, even a religion. Our Lord never proclaimed a cause. He didn't stand up for the rights of the civilians and the rights of the Romans and the rights of the Jews and the rights of this and the rights of that. He proclaimed personal devotion to himself. To be a disciple is to be a devoted love slave of the Lord Jesus. Many of us who call ourselves Christians are not devoted to Jesus Christ. We're devoted to our perspective, our portrayal of him, even our personification of him. But are we devoted to him? No man on earth has his passionate love to the Lord Jesus unless the Holy Ghost has imparted it to him. It only comes from God and returns back to God. We may admire him, we may respect him, we may revere him, we may worship him, but we cannot love him. The only lover of the Lord Jesus is the Holy Spirit, and he sheds abroad in our hearts the very love of God, that we would be able to love God and love Jesus as we ought, because love is of God, and that kind of love only proceeds from God and returns back to God. He will take your heart, your nerves, whenever the Holy Ghost sees a chance of glorifying Jesus, He will take your heart, your nerves, your whole personality, and simply make you ablaze 
and glow with devotion to Jesus Christ, not ablaze with glory for you to be personified, glorified, or gazed upon as though you have something unique and different. No, it's devotion to Jesus. That is what the Holy Spirit does. All that God has given through the gifts of the Holy Spirit are devoted to revealing and pointing to Jesus Christ. The Christian life is stamped by moral spontaneous originality. Consequently, the disciple is open to the same charge that Jesus Christ was, meaning that of inconsistency. But Jesus was always consistent to God, but inconsistent to what man's expectations were. And the Christian must be consistent to the life of God, the life of the Son of God in him, not consistent to hard and fast creeds or ideas or religious laws or patriotic themes. Men pour themselves into their creeds, into their devotions, into their ideas, into their wants, into their desires, and God has to blast them out of their prejudices before they can become devoted to Jesus. If any man come to me and hate not, and you can fill in the blank with that, because Jesus did. In a world that I live in, I see people always wanting to be a part of the greater picture. They want to be a part of the country they live in. They want to be a part of the political process they participate with. They want to be a part of the social change that they experience. They want to be a part of their leadership discussions. They want to be a part of the glory or the fame and fortune that people seek after and want to be somehow getting without really getting it and not being, oh, well, I was seeking glory and fame and fortune. It's like they always want to be with it and not outside of it. And you know, the greatest outsider there was was Jesus. Because every time that they wanted to elevate him, he stepped away from it. He would not suffer the praises of the people to make him into something more than what he was prepared to declare at the time that he was living it. And so too, I pray with you that, like me, we could find the place we're at as being perfectly satisfied because if we're doing what Jesus said, which was to hear his voice, then when we hear it, then he tells us what to do. And if we know what to do and we do it, then what difference does it make whether you're glorified or whether you're humbled, whether you step up or you step down, whether you rise up or you lay down? What difference would that make? As long as Jesus is glorified in what you're doing, because he said to do it. One of the things he said about his life here on earth was that he only did those things that he saw his father doing. And I bring that up a lot because can we say the same thing? Am I only doing those things that God does? Am I only doing those things that God wants me to do? And are you sure of that? Are you absolutely sure that what you're doing today is what, the way, and how God would want you to do it. Because if it's not, if it's not, then like Chambers says in Utmost, you're not worthy to be my disciple. Because you have to hate the thing in you that causes you to do it your way. Because you have to find the place where you can listen and do it his way. Because it's all about Jesus. It's not about you. It's a hard thing to say sometimes. But you know what's even harder? It's a hard thing to do. So don't make it about you. Make it about him.